Jason Ryan then. Over here this morning. Lachlan got in here early this morning. I got the text as I was coming out the shower. He said, can you get here in 10? I said, probably not. He said, well, I'm on my way. So thank you very much for doing that. And Jason Ryan, who took time out from his dinner to have a chat to you. Good mm. on him. A real pleasure. Yeah, to speak to Jason Ryan on the platform, or Dick's assistant coach. And uh, first talking about this is the biggest test on this northern tour. It's probably the biggest test since um, that's those South African matches in South Africa. But um, do you guys, the coaches, the players, does All Blacks camp see this as 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 the litmus test? No, uh, we just see it as our next test. To be fair, we've been really mindful of our language that we're not treating it as our as our last one because you know everyone will start thinking about going home. Um, we, we, we've been very much um, challenging the group around what we do next in our trainings and this being our next test match on the calendar. Um, yep, it's England, it's at Twickenham and how good. We're really looking forward to what that challenge brings. Um, they're a quality side right across the park. Haven't done much talking around 2019 at all. Um, different team, different coaching group, really focused on um, the task at hand and what we need to achieve. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a, a four pack that obviously you've worked closely with for a number of months now, and it seems to be the one that's forming as uh, your A side forward pack, if that makes sense. Do you guys see it that way? Was it pretty easy to pick this eight? <laughs> no, it wasn't actually. It was uh, probably I think across the whole twenty three to be fair, um, but the forwards was really tough to pick. Um, you know, like you know, a couple of props have really put their hand up and Fletcher Newell, we've gone for Nepo's experience. Um, you know, the hooker position's been really challenged well. Either can start, either can finish. And obviously Scott Barrett comes in at six because he's been just phenomenal in his ball carry and his work rate. We just could not not have him on the park. So, oh, look, I think we, you know, we had some tough decisions to make and, and had a lot of guys really disappointed um, that they weren't playing this test. But, you know, the whole group, the whole 36, has worked extremely hard this week and, uh, the boys not involved have um, really stepped up and, and, and helped us. Yeah, I wanted to touch on uh, Scott Barrett because, as you say, there, he's at uh, Blindside again and he's getting a number of selections there this year. And it feels like, based on what Ian Foster and, and the rest of uh, the coaching group has said around um, uh, Scott, is that he, he seems to be the preferred number six. What is it about him um, that you guys, I guess, uh, are looking at as opposed to your other blindsides or your other options at Blindside? What does he bring to the table? I think it's a mixture of everything. He's got unbelievable uh, line-out skill set, um, obviously, um, with Harry Jumps and, and his, and not only is, is what he is around our mauling, both attack and, and defence, but he's also got really good line-out knowledge. So he's really good on formation and line-out defence. So we believe that was really instrumental in, in against an England side who have got some good variation in their line-out platforms. Um, and uh, along with that, I guess it was important that, you know, we really want to start Guzzler for his 100th test um, alongside Sam. So we needed um, the best we've got and the most experienced, um, you know, pack that we could pick. And we believe we've done that. But it's also very exciting that we can bring someone like Shannon Frizzell and, and Hoskins, who are really good ball carriers. And that's what we're going to need. And even Sonny finishing the game, um, that's where we need to have real impact because we believe we made some inroads. I guess in that Scotland game where our, our bench was right where it needed to be and that, that's what we want from your black team in, in finishing games. Yeah, awesome to see, as you said, the Brady Brody Retallick uh, notching 100 tests. Yeah, because Scott Barrett at, at Blindside, he, he, he obviously is a different sort of player as he's Shannon Frizzell and even your kid of Ioannis who seem to be a little bit more of a, an athletic ball running type, if you will. In terms of the way that you guys want your blindside flanker to play, does Scott Barrett suit that better than, say, those other two players? Oh, look, the, the test matches are won uh, in big physical encounters, and, and Scott Barrett is an unbelievable athlete. He's powerful, um, he's unbelievably tough, and he just has to be in the pack. Mm. <laughs> it's quite simple. Um, and, you know, we, we believe that, you know, as I said before, his line-out knowledge and his ability and just that little bit of extra height right across the um, all our jumpers gives us some good variation, that which we're going to need. Uh, Brody Retallick and Sam Whitelock. You talked about Brody notching Test number one hundred. I think he and Sam Whitelock now become the the joint, the most um, kept locking duo of all time. That's quite an achievement, isn't it? And as a forwards coach, I guess you could appreciate that longevity as well. Yeah, I can look look playing lock forward um, for any you know any milestone or any you know any team Super Rugby whatever it is. But to do it at the Test level, and and not only do it at the Test level, but do it so consistently, the pair of them. 
but they've been unbelievable in their preparation for all of their test matches and that's given them longevity in the game and they're still playing some great rugby you know Sammy you know he's leading really well he came in sort of last minute obviously with with Sam Kane going home he's done a phenom- mm. phenomenal job in that and you know a guy like Brody like it's a real achievement for him you know he, he changed the game as a lock forward I believe and he's he's still been in some form he had a couple of years in Japan he's starting to get his body back to test level um, but he's just so tough and you know he's so so respected um, I think in world rugby the pair of them but in the All Blacks they demand a lot out of the room a lot out of the coaches a lot out of themselves so you know it's a great milestone for them both but it's nothing that's really been talked about but definitely Brody we want to you know, we want to put in a good performance for him. Are you guys happy with where he's at physically? Obviously, he had an injury early this year, and it feels like over the last maybe year or two, he's had a couple of niggles. Is is he in a good physical state as far as you're concerned? Yeah, he's great. He's the best he's been. You know, like the injury's well behind him. His weight's where we need it. And you know what? What we know about those two, Brody and Sam, and and even Scooter, is the tougher the contest, the better they go. So we believe that you know is a big part of our selections as well. Mm. Uh, Jason Ryan, All Blacks assistant coach with us here on the platform. All Blacks, of course, up against England on Sunday morning. Jason, I feel like I'm running through the whole 15 here. I hope you don't mind. But um, I'll, I'll move on to the loose forwards a little bit. Uh, Dalton Papali'i, it felt like last week against Scotland and, and actually the match against Wales as well, both of them, um, it, it felt as though not not his coming of age, but it felt like he sort of really hit the ground running in the black jumper. Yeah, it's probably a good way of putting it. I agree with you a lot. Dalton has been... You know, one of those players who's, you know, he's just sat behind Sam Kane, who's obviously our captain, and he's been given an opportunity and he's taken it. And, you know, he's still a young man, still a young seven. You know, and, and unlike, you know, Super Rugby, where you can give guys consistent runs every week, and he's starting, obviously, for the Blues, been a big part of that. With Test Rugby, you know, you've got your captain, and his opportunity's been limited. But what people don't see is how hard he's worked at training and how hard our trainings are to set these guys up so that under pressure um, they can play freely and, and, and execute their roles. And I, I think he's got a real point of difference in how he carries the ball. Um, and he made some good decisions and, and a couple of good poaches over the ball um, and some jackals. So, look, he'll be better for that test. He's had to recover really well, as we all have with it being a shorter week from Scotland. But you know, as I said, he's, you know, he's taken his opportunity and, and good on him. Yeah, that short turnaround, does it, I'll just touch on that for a second. Does, does it put you guys on the back foot at all? Do you think? No. No, it doesn't. It does if you talk about it and think that you're hard done by it. But you just got to change your language and go to the next test, boys. We'll recover smartly. Um, work on a couple of things. If anything, it's probably better because you don't load the week up with stuff you don't need because it's short and sharp and tense and we're into it. You know, this time of year, they're not getting any fitter. They're not getting any stronger. Um, you just got to keep them fresh, sharp and happy. Brilliant. Uh, now, Mark Talley's got the start on the wing, which this will be a, a, a real big uh, a match for, for Mark, of course, made his debut last week. Uh, him over Sevu, uh, what was the thinking there? Oh, I think Mark really took his opportunity, to be fair, on the right wing. I think he, um, you know, again, <laughs> he's been training really, really well. Um, we thought that, mm. you know, to, to play a big test match like Scotland and, and how he played and his work rate on and off the ball, um, it was a bit of a no-brainer for us to start him again, really. Jordy Barrett at 12, he's um, he's had a number of really good uh, games at that position this year. I guess, you, would you call a bona fide All Blacks Test 12 now? Oh, look, uh, I'm really mindful of talking around number who's number one. It's it's what the best selection is for the week. And Jordy is a big physical 12. And, you know, Owen Farrell um, is a big physical 12 as well. So... You know, you need to be able to have your, you know, match your contest and your physical exchanges. And and Geordie, you know, we believe he took his chance when he when we gave him his, his first crack of 12 and he's been consistent right through, so he's been rewarded for it. Mm. And you've got Bowden at fullback as well. And I guess when you're taking on an England side, you, you're expecting obviously that physical battle, you know, uh, it's tough at set piece and the breakdown and whatnot, but then you're also expecting those um, those high kicks and them testing just in your back three, I guess. But in that department, Jason Bowden, of course, a smaller body than Geordie. And when you factor in that aerial attack you expect from England, I guess it would be less ideal to have a smaller body. Well, Bodie's experienced. You know, he's played over 100 tests. So he knows the game and he knows test rugby and he knows big test matches. So that was our reasoning there. 
Um, so, look, I, I think he, he adds good good voice from the back with Caleb um, and Mark Talia on the wings. You know, we know what they can both do on attack, but, you know, the high ball is always an um, interesting one at, at Twickenham. So having his experience and making sure the boys are aligned under the ball is, is important for us. Mm. Jason Ryan with us out of All Blacks camp uh, over in uh, London. Hey, uh, Jason, one thing that's really been coming up this this year, it seems, in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, just red and yellow cards and players adjusting to the rules. What do you say to your players, you know, in, the, in leading up to the test and the day of the test, I guess what's sort of in the back of the mind, maybe with the coaches more so than the players, is sort of adjusting to maybe tougher rules. And when you see these reds and yellow cards, it, it can be tricky to adjust to. But what do you what do you talk to your players about? We train it. If they knock down or they're high at training, they get yellow carded. Um, there's no other way you can do it. You've got to practice it. So no, he's talking about it the day of a test match or the day before. You've got to execute your good habits of training, and that's what we do. Brilliant. Do you, do you ever get? Um, do you ever sort of look at the referee and think that ones might be a bit more card happy than the others? Oh, look, not really. Everything's different. Every game is different. Every decision um, is different. All I do know is they're all doing a tough job, and um, you know, we, <laughs> you can slow it down frame by frame, but. <laughs> Tear right now. The speed of the breakdown, even at training this afternoon, it's like wow. How do they do it? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, you've obviously um, been uh, in, uh, in England for a couple of days now. Has it been around there? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, we're staying at the Lensbury. Um, haven't been to Twickenham. We'll just turn up there on game day and um, look forward to the atmosphere and, and everything that's about uh, t- Twickenham. We, we we respect the England side and um, you know they're well coached and. Yeah, it'll be a hell of an atmosphere, 80 plus thousand there, and um, just a great challenge for us, which I think has is, is come at a good time. Yeah. Did you have much, um, many memories there? Have you managed to, to grace the ground many times yourself? Never walked in there, never been there. 